right so coloring a page in well I was going <laughs> I'm so used to to doing this digitally I almost said coloring a page in procreate because I use that a lot but actually no I'm coloring a page traditionally using some watercolor pencils these super color soft pencils which I like very much they're they're nice nice pencils a little expensive for watercolor pencils uh, most Karen Karen Dosh products are a little expensive but I like them so I'm going to use them I've got a new little lot set up today so hopefully the video will be better quality so welcome I'm just going to get started here uh, I'm kind of new to using watercolor pencils so uh, what they are if you're not familiar yourself uh, it's a water soluble pencil I've got a set of 40 here which uh, generally I'm I would probably want more colors but this particular set the Karen Dosh super color in, includes really nice colors in the 40 set so I don't I don't find myself wanting a whole lot of colors very often you know so this seems to be a good it's a good range of colors for what I do um, and they're soluble in water and there's lots of different techniques I'm just going to use a pretty straightforward technique for this where I'm just coloring in and then using uh, a brush to activate it and in this case I'm using a really nice watercolor brush it's a uh, series 7 Winsor & Newton these are really good brushes uh, sable hair and I've also got this uh, cheaper brush it's just a flat brush no name at all and I'm going to use this just for larger areas uh, the thing about the better brush for doing this is that uh, if you if you try to get by with a, a cheaper brush it can tend to just push the pigment around rather than uh, lay it down smoothly and so you're just pushing the pigment away from where you want it it doesn't seem to want to stay where you put it and you kind of end up with kind of a blotchy mess some of the times so uh, I tried so I've read that uh, a better brush a better watercolor brush would not do that as badly and turns out that that's true so uh, once again you get what you pay for at least in this in this area so and it is an expensive brush but it's not it's not out of reach of, of hobbyists or uh, normal folks so I'm just filling in some a little bit of a yellow here for this particular tree it's getting some tone down uh, I like to mix my colored pencils. I usually try to do two or three passes on a section. A little bit here. And some of these trees. Rather than just use, uh, that's why the 40 pencil set's plenty. Because I try to mix the colors on the page. And I try to use at least three different pencils much of the time so that I get a little uh, variation going so I'm using some yellowish different yellowish shades on these trees I want lots of variation because there is there is lots of variation in trees in nature so just to keep the piece from being very boring and and so on. Trying to put a little more variation in. So that includes this tree too. And this is where you really uh, start to work in the foliage of the tree. I, I, you know, you don't want to draw every single leaf in your line art, but you can do some more of that with your color and just kind of indicate. It's always about indicating. It's never about uh, just. It's never about shouting. It's always about indicating things subtly, because that's that's the way. That's the way it is in reality. 
right? Things are very subtle. And if you go around shouting all the time, then you miss a lot of that subtlety. Okay, so let's see, you gotta to kind of decide on the the ground. Um, I might use this for the ground. Let's see how that looks. This might be good for part of it, and then I'll put some green in there as well. So one thing that I've always had a bit of an issue with with colored pencil. I love I love the medium of colored pencil, and I've done some nice illustrations with it, and I like it. But one thing that I found that holds me back is that I'm a little timid when it comes to value contrast with with colored pencils. It seems like a lot of the pencils will have the same basic value, and by that I mean the the lightness or darkness of the color. So your picture will wind up not having much contrast, and that's not that's not something that uh, you want in a picture. You know, you want a lot of contrast in your picture, and if you just use the uh, if you just color it lightly, like I'm doing here, you can see there's not a lot of of contrast there. And so I'll I'll need to definitely go back and darken darken these values. And they will darken as I lay more color on top. And they will also darken when I activate the colored pencil with water. And that's what I was sort of leading up to is that that's why I kind of went this direction with it because it's a little easier to get some value contrast with the, uh, with the watercolor pencil. So I'm going to go ahead and do some activating with this larger brush here. And I try not to get too uh, crazy with the uh, water. I try to keep it fairly uh, dry. And I don't try to just get every little nook and cranny. That'll come because we're going to, this is going to be worked over quite a few times. But you can already see I've got a little bit more. The, the color is definitely popping a bit more. So I, I like where that's heading, and I'm not going to do the tree yet because it's still a little too, a little too close to the uh, value of the ground. So I'm going to bring in some blue in here now. This is sort of a, a cyan light blue, and it'll begin to make a nice blue green with this yellow as it's layering over the top. Uh, color pencils are great for learning uh, color theory because due to their transparent nature uh, laying one t color on top of another and creating mixes and things that's real good that's a real good education in color and so you start to learn uh, things like what makes a color cool and what makes it warm and, and it's a good way to learn that as it's not intimate it's not as intimidating as paint because you know pencils are so familiar to all of us you know no matter if we've uh, have any background in art everyone knows about pencils and how you use them so there's no mystery to it so you're not I think people are a little less intimidated by it I I am and I'm less intimidated by it and it, there's no cleanup and things like that as well. So there's definitely a lot to uh, a lot to recommend colored pencil as a medium. It's just it is a bit slow at times, but uh, Robert Hughes, the New York Times art critic who wrote Shock of the New, he said that we we need a slow art in these times. That all everything is getting so fast that we need to return to kind of a slow art. And I think he's right. I think we do need need to experience some slowness in our lives, obviously. Things are very crazy, so you see how that just went a nice green. I like to make noises and and racket when I draw. Well really when I do anything. So this is why the 
the live streaming is good <laughs> because I can I can act nutty and nobody cares nobody really watches so that's that's a handy thing about this I try not to go over stuff too much while it's still wet um, now I try to pick out the little dry areas to work in. And this is basically it. You just it's just a you know, the rest of it is just continuing this. You just continue and continue and continue until the values are have built up. To about where you want them, and the piece is, is looking about the way that you, that you had intended when you started. Um, now I'm just putting in a shadow here. I've already got some of the brown down, and the brown and the blue will make a nice black. And it's I think it's important to make your blacks out of a couple of colors, like a brown and a blue because then you can play with the temperature of the black you can make the you can make it a bit cooler or a bit warmer depending on how much brown versus blue you put in there so it's good to good to be able to have some control over that so now I'm using the smaller brush in this area I don't want to get too too crazy so there we go my values are still a bit light so I need to start pushing them a bit more, but since I've just activated that, you know, just recently, I'm going to go ahead and work in these smaller trees here. And you notice I don't really use the tip of the pencil or the very point. You know, I'm not like this. I'm, I'm pretty relaxed. And I don't have to lay down a, a super amount of pigment on these. I can let it just sort of lay on the paper. This is a vellum surface bristol board and so the surface is just a little rougher than this the uh, I guess they call it smooth surface. Uh, I always get the hot pressed and cold pressed uh, mixed up. I'm not sure which is which but uh, a hot pressed paper is either rougher or or smooth and the, uh, the cold press is just the opposite right so and I don't have the pad handy to tell you whether this was cold or, or hot whatever it doesn't really matter just get something with a little tooth to it and, and you'll find that your pencils will just glide right on you won't get real real deep value your your colors will all be kind of light but that's okay because you know this isn't the end we're not just putting this one little wash of green color on here we're gonna we're gonna put at least a couple more shades on here and that's part of what makes it tedious but it's part of what it what gives it this really unique luminous look because you know the lights passing through the the pigment and it's reflecting back from the paper you know so it's going in and back out towards your eye and it just it makes a really nice makes for a nicer picture so I'm going back with the yellow here I, I probably would have been safe to put yellow on all of these trees but didn't really want to want to leave some room you know for variation I do try to make them a little darker towards the uh, the base of the tree because it just makes sense, right? Because the light's going to be hitting from the top and traveling down. So this is pretty yellow. I don't want to put any yellow in there. Probably want to put some more green in here. I think it's about dry enough to, to start. Sometimes I, I'll give it a little test. So it can be hard just looking to see if it's dry enough. But this looks good, so continue here.
It's really relaxing, I think. This is a really relaxing way of doing this. It's just sort of... I, my mind doesn't really wander, but it doesn't really... It focuses on what I'm doing, but not... Not in a stressful way, but just sort of... You know, I'm I'm fast I'm fascinated by what what's happening. And I think that's that's the real appeal to art in general to me is that you know you can get really fascinated by what's going on just right there in front of you. Well, this is uh, this is Avengers Infinite or uh, Endgame Weekend. I hope to see it this weekend. I'm not. I'm not. I don't know. I wouldn't know. Don't know if I'm a huge fan. Even I love comics, of course. I love storytelling. Good storytelling. Um, yeah, so I don't know if I'm a good fan, a big fan of uh, the Marvel movies. You know, I've got two adolescent kids, so obviously they enjoy them. So we go as a family and and see them for the most part. Um, yeah, they have some pretty good values in them. They have some not so good things too. But uh, by and large, you know, I've been fairly satisfied with, you know, self-sacrifice and and things like that that they portray in the movies is is pretty healthy. I think. Can't really think of anything off the top of my head that's been too bad. Sometimes they're a bit creepy, I guess, like the that that Weasley magician guy that was in the the first. Infinity, the Infinity War movie, he was really kind of creepy. Alright, just adding some more green in here. Kind of uh, cool off that yellow just a little bit. So yeah, I don't know if we'll get to see it though this weekend or not. It's pretty, like most weekends, this weekend's pretty action packed. So I'm not going to use the big brush because I want I want to keep some of these. I don't want these areas to blend together too much. So I'm just running in here, kind of trying to to think about the contour of the tree and how the tree is constructed as I make the brush strokes so that I'm not so I'm following the form rather than just going straight up and down or straight back and forth across I'm actually thinking about okay so this part is rounded so I'm going to use kind of some rounded strokes to get that get some of these little leaves here Right, it's looking, and I hope you can tell it's already looking darker. On the camera, as I'm looking, the value is just a touch off. It's a little lighter on the camera than it is here with me, so kind of keep that in mind as you watch that it's a little darker in real life. That's the thing about streaming. Uh, I'm using a webcam, and it's 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 okay, I guess. It's a very popular one, but um, I don't know where I stand on its performance. It's uh, I wish it had some more control to it, like an exposure control, because you might have noticed that the exposure changes depending on where my hand is, and so yeah, I don't know. I, and it, this is really brightly lit where I'm drawing. I've got a shop, an LED shop light I bought from Lowe's, and uh, wow, it's probably, I don't know, 
over a thousand lumens or something. It's a really powerful light. And yet it still, it looks about right, you know, when I look at it on the camera. But it's really much brighter. So. Yeah. This is one of the streaming issues. Of which there are many. It's not the, certainly not the only issue I have streaming. Now, one issue is that I used to stream with my phone, which is so convenient. You just stick it up. Uh, I've got a little place to mount it. You just stick it up there and you're done. I didn't have to use the computer. didn't have to use OSB or any of that stuff. Just go. Well, now you have to have a thousand subscribers on YouTube to do that, I, which makes no sense to me. I don't know why you would, as a content aggregator, why you would make it hard for people to produce content. You know? I mean, that's the only thing they produce is, 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 well, they don't produce anything, you know. Creators like myself produce the content, and uh, they just provide the means, they provide the means of production. That's never a good model. To let someone else have the means of production. But anyway, I digress. So they don't let me stream because I don't have a thousand subscribers. And I guess, I don't know, is that an easy number to get? I mean, I, I only have like six subscribers. So yeah, I don't think I'm going to be getting, and one of those is my son. And another one of those guys was just somebody who wanted me to subscribe to his channel. Pretty sure he's never watched any of my, my videos. Uh, so, anyway. Internet problems. Kind of ridiculous, really, when you think about it. By and large. So now I'm just adding a little of this blue-green in here. Some of these darker areas. This is a nice uh, dark shade. there so it's been a, a strange day weather wise here it's started out rainy and sun sun's been out and in like infrequently today but it's the temperature's nice it's a, a spring day in northeast Tennessee Like I've been here before, like I already used this a couple, of, you know. But this is how I do it. I, you know, it doesn't make a lot of sense. You know, like why not just do it all? You know, if I'm going to use this particular green, why not you do it all right, and then then you're done with that green, and you move on to the next. And sometimes I can do that with something like this, where I just really haven't made a lot of decisions about exactly how things are going to be. I really just don't know, so I have to kind of keep going back and forth between the colors, trying to come up with some good decisions on what to do here and there. So this green is a little, it's in between the blue greens and the yellow greens, so I'm kind of putting it in the background. And then depending on where this goes, I'll either go uh, warmer or cooler with it. And this is a very yellow green. Yeah, you know what? I don't think I've used it yet, so... And one thing about green, which is a surprise to me, after having had a little color theory, is that you know you learn that red and green are complementary colors, and so you tend to think of it, it's easy to get into uh, a mindset of thinking of complementary colors as being opposite of one another because they are they're opposite on the color wheel. So you, you know it's easy to start thinking of them as opposite colors, but really. 
that might not be a good way of looking at it because there can be red in green you know and and that's that came as a little bit of a surprise to me that how much even in a summer forest how much orange and red there is in the foliage but I like to save that until the end because it's sort of like a I reward myself with the uh, with the reds because that's my favorite color the oranges and reds so now I'm just putting a little of this kind of sea green color in here dabbing it in here and there okay so where to go now where to go and what to do I think I'll get this blue out and do a little more on the bottoms of these trees that are kind of out here. I hope you can see how the image is building though, you know, how the color is building on the on the image and how it's uh, how it's developed over the course of the video. be more apparent if this were like a time lapse but um, I just you know I don't have a lot of time to to actually go into producing videos I mean that's not what that's not what I do I'm not a video producer so um, you know I don't I, I just like spending my time doing that but, but yeah so it's really lovely to you know that's it's watercolor pencils are fun because you know you 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 get something and you think well I don't know is that okay and then but then man you 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 dip that brush in the water and you activate the pencils and then the all oh, it's like ooh, oh that's looking so you, you can tell yeah you can tell that the value uh, increases a little bit there and then you just start getting things happening that you know, you may not have actually thought to do yourself, but, you know, the colors start to mix a little bit together, and I don't know, it's just, you know, it's a little bit of, it's just a little bit of magic, thanks to physics and light and chemistry and all kinds of things that we can be thankful for. And I do thank God for for making the world beautiful and including things like this. He didn't have to do that, but it's nice that he did. This edge is kind of curling, makes it a little hard for me to see. There we go. And you just, you just, just get a, a nice, it's just a nice look to it once you start putting the uh, the watercolor on there. You start getting a nice, starts to feel nice to me. Go back in with some more of this green here. Again, just trying to find some more areas on this big tree. Yeah, I'm worried about my cat. I've got this cat she's a year and a half old and we let our cats out at night and she did not come home this morning which is very unusual our other cat did he's kind of an old tom cat but he's he's real sweet She has not come home, so I hope she hope she comes home soon. I find it a little hard to to not think about where in the world is that cat? You know, especially since it was rainy this morning. They're usually really anxious to get in and have some some food. But no. Nope. No trembles. 
she was not out there. And I'm, I'm really concerned about, uh, really concerned about my daughter because it, she's really my daughter's cat. She wanted a kitten so bad, and this kitten just showed up on her doorstep. So I mean, what am I going to say? Couldn't really say no at that point. You know, one, one really nasty rainy day. Uh, not this past November, but the November before. November of 17. And this little drowned looking cat was under our rose bush. Okay, well I guess we got another cat. So, didn't know how our normal cat would take to her. First, of course, he was like, yeah, I don't know, hmm, you're weird. But he really has grown to really like this kitten, and he's, I can tell that he's a little concerned too, which is you know, kind of weird, but, but my daughter, she just really is crazy about this kitten, so I hope that, I hope the kitten's okay, and I hope the kitten comes back soon. So you pet people, you know, you know what I'm talking about. I'm very sympathetic to animals. I would definitely say I'm an animal lover, not an animal hater. Uh, and I'm definitely a cat person. A lot of people uh, find cats uh, too aloof, I guess. I'm not a dog person, but I, I will like dogs, all right. I just would not want to own a dog myself. I love petting dogs and seeing them out and about, but I uh, wouldn't want to own one. I'm just not, you know, don't want to take the time and effort that a dog takes. It, you know, dogs are, they're needy. They gotta, gotta have, you have to take care of them. I guess it's that part that I'm not so keen about. It's going pretty quick. This is, you know, I was wondering how, how much time this would take to do. Like, you know, is this going to be something that's takes a long time or, but it, it goes pretty quick. So I've been working for 33 minutes, according to the little uh, video clock here. And, um, Yeah, now I'm just about done with this panel, which is a pretty good little bit of the of the picture here. And I guess I'm not almost done. I've got quite a bit left to do, but I see where I'm going, and I like the direction it's going in. So I know that this is like like it's valid, right? Because I'm kind of testing this method of coloring out too. Uh, I hadn't really completely settled whether I was going to do this story um, like this or not. It's so peaceful to do this. I just can't tell you how much it means to me just to be able to uh, sit and draw like this, you know, and just, it's, it's just, ah, uh, it's, um, I don't know, it's just good for the soul, it's good for the soul, it makes me happy, and it's just, you should do it, you should try it, do it, you don't have to make something wonderful, just, you know, a lot of people started, uh, just coloring, you know, doing the adult coloring books and stuff. I don't know if that's still a thing, if people are still into that, but, you know, I can totally see why that would be, you know, beneficial to someone and why it would be uh, therapeutic. It is for me. I love, I love drawing and coloring and 
It's, I don't know. It's just so, it's peaceful. That's the only way I know to describe it. So now I'm putting a little bits of brown. This is a reddish, more of a reddish brown. I guess you'd call this more of a, a sienna maybe? What's it say on it? Yeah, burnt sienna. Okay. Way to go. Not an umber, but more of a sienna. These pencils, uh, I mentioned at the beginning of the stream, these are Karen Dosh Super Color pencils. And I, I really like them because I like the, the Pablo pencils that Karen Dosh has. And these are exact matches to the Pablos so that I can use them interchangeably because they have a bit of a different feel when you work with them. It's the only best way I know to kind of describe that. I like, I, and I like this way of working in particular. The it, you really get a chance to develop the image. And, and maybe that's not a good thing because this is a comic after all it's not it's not an illustration so I have to be careful about I don't want to get too precious with anything and start making it into a an illustration because this is supposed to be something that you read not something that you see as it might not be a good way of making a distinction but you know, when you go and you read a painting, you know, you may stand there for quite some time looking at the painting and looking at the, the details of it and thinking about what the artist did here and there and so on. And you may do the same with the comic page, but really, though, I think a comic page should encourage you to, to get on with it, right, to move on to the next thing and not just... Uh, just be totally into a, one panel or another. But you want to do, a, you know, as an artist, of course, you want to do a, a good job. You know, you want, you want your work to be an, of an appropriate level of quality. Let's see. So, I think it's finally time to pull a little start with some reds and oranges here and this is this is this is where it just are I just have so much fun I really do like this part just putting these little bits of this warm nice warm color in there I don't know to me it just makes it really start to pop and come alive and it, it just amazes me what a difference it, it kind of makes in the the picture. I really appreciate it. I guess is the only way I know to, to put it. And we'll work some in here in this larger tree. Maybe not so much in the shadow area, but maybe hit this top quite a bit. Subtle, but it's there. A little bit there. So yeah, this is my favorite, my favorite color, scarlet, Escalarte. <laughs> or no, that's not what that says. It says Escalarte, scarlet. Yeah. Wow, that's just it's just a very pretty color. Zero seven zero. It's got two stars for light fatness, fatness, for light fastness, and I'm not sure if that's good or not. I think it is. I think uh, the one stars are the ones you want to stay away from, maybe. There's quite a few one star ones in here. And I know some people get really uptight about that, but I don't know. I don't really, 
don't really care. So just looking at a few of those. That type of thing has never been a a, a big concern. I mean, this, the things that I'm doing here aren't things that are going to be uh, hung on a wall necessarily. These are this is kind of production art for for a book, so. You know, exposure to light's not a big deal. But I understand why it's a big deal to some other artists, you know, who do more portrait, fine art type, gallery type things, but that's just not my bag, so. So I don't worry about it, because I don't have to worry about it. That's, it's nice. I can just create, and, and if I want to use pink, I can use pink. I don't have to say, well, this pink isn't light fast. I better not use it. I've got a set of um, the Karen Dosh Luminance pencils, which are light fast, and they are really, really nice pencils. They're not worth the money. You know, no, nothing is worth that, right? You know, if, if, there, if there's alternatives that are almost as good for half or a third of the cost, then you can't really, you know, honestly, can you really justify, can't really justify the cost, but I think it's more of a, since I'm in the United States, it's more of a shipping thing, I think, than a cost of production type thing. But anyway, I did, you know, they're supposed to be the best colored pencils in the world, so, I had to try them, and I did. I bought a small set first, and uh, I was impressed. They were good. They were good pencils because they they layer well, and they also um, burnish well, which is something that's hard hard to get out of a colored pencil. Usually, if they layer well, they don't burnish well, and if they burnish well, they don't layer well. And that's especially true of cheaper pencils. And that's what makes them less suitable for uh, artists. However, you know, if, if a particular pencil fits your particular technique, use it. Use it and don't worry about it. I've got a set of uh, the Windsor & Newton, I don't know if they're called Studio Grade or, or what the what the terminology is with them, but I really like them. I think they they don't layer as good as maybe some pencils, but they're they're so vibrant. They burnish really well. Very soft. Uh, nice core. And they're inexpensive if you if you use like a Michaels. They're available at Michaels. I've not seen them anywhere else. I think it's an exclusive type thing. Uh, but if you use a Michael's coupon, you know, one of those 50% off dealios, they're very reasonable. I think it's like 60 bucks for a set of 48. And that's the only other drawback is that that's the biggest set you can get, is a 48 set. A windy day today, I hear the wind blowing outside. I don't know if you can... Make it out on the microphone. Okay, so again, it's just moving right along. I'm trying to decide how much I want to do on the ground. Um, leave it fairly light or work some more into it. I haven't really decided at this point. And I may, I may start working on some of these other panels and then come back to that. Right now, I'm going to work on the character, I think, this little guy here. And him, uh, and, you know, in fact, I think this would be a perfect opportunity to show you the, uh, the Pablo pencils. Because I don't want him, I don't want to dilute him at all, because he's an important part of the scene, right? So, he's got to be front and center. So, I'm going to use... Pablo pencil so that he doesn't dilute. 
They got this really nice blue color called Blue Jeans. <laughs> I love the name of it. Blue Jeans. It's really... It's a lovely blue. Lovely blue color. So, I'm doing him like full... Kind of full saturation because he's, you know, obviously very small. I want to make sure that you can see him good. He stands out a bit. Use an orange for his flesh. Just kind of dot it in there. Now these are not water soluble, so. When I go over this with, uh, if I activate anywhere around the figure, he he won't be affected, and it's it's another reason why I like the uh, Karen Dosh pencils. Blue for the for a shadow there. I typically keep shadows and things very simple. I just say well. I just assume the light's always warm, basically, and always make the shadows cool. And that's, that's you know, not... If you were going for, like, an, a very realistic portrait, you would not do that. You would, you'd take the time to really actually see what the light was actually doing, the actual colors, and not just kind of wing it, you know, and make things generally a color. You would be a little more careful. But I don't have to do that, so so I'm not going to do it. If I don't have to do it, I'm not going to do it. Because this is a... I had an art teacher at Berea College. His name was Neil de Teresa. He was a really cool, really cool guy. I miss Neil a lot. But one thing that he would say, uh, he would say, always tell believable lies when you draw. <laughs> I never forgot that. That was really, really good advice. Tell believable lies. So, you know, you just accept from the outset that what you're lying to your audience, right? You're showing them a drawing. and uh, But it's a drawing. It's not a really a, a tree or a, a, a forest here. Like. But that's okay because they're complicit in, in your lie because they already know. It's a lie. You know, no one, no one came in and said, "Oh, what? You're lying to me." They, they knew all along, so it's okay. And they want you to lie to them. Just like you know, if you go to a haunted house, you want to be scared. They want, you, they want to be lied to, and they want you to lie successfully. And I, th I think that the problem, and that's the problem I have with. Uh, Ultra realism is that the lie is it, there's it's like an uncanny valley type thing where the lie is too believable and for some reason that that makes it unappealing to me personally and I mean, you know I'm not not I certainly don't want to. I'm not criticizing people who who do very realistic art, who do ultra realism, because it's very obviously it's valid and uh, a valid way of expressing yourself. But I think the the expression level is a little low for me. You know, like I, I find it hard to express myself to the degree that I want. Uh, using that kind of technique. But other people don't. You know, other people are fine with that. They, they're, they're able to express themselves fully doing that and they're good with it and so they keep pursuing that all, all their art career. And hey, more power to them. I'm very, um, I'm in awe of hyper-realism. It, it takes such, it must take a lot of discipline to, to sit there and, and really work out what what the colors are and what they're doing and how the light is is playing around and, and um, it's it's discipline a big big discipline and um, 
And I'm, I'm respectful of the discipline, for sure. It's just not what turns me on. I, I like to do stuff like this. It's that's uh, you know you know what it is. It's 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 a lie, but you know you you know what to believe. You know what I'm asking you to believe. I guess it's up to you whether or not you believe it, but you know at least what I'm asking you to believe. And that's to believe that there's this little figure walking out of this uh, forest of trees. Tell believable lies. That was, that was good advice. Good advice. Even if you're not an artist, <laughs> you certainly don't want to tell lies that no one believes if you're going to be a liar. But it's probably best if you're not a liar, though. I'm just going to go on record and say that being a liar is not a good thing to be. Maybe you should not be a liar. Nobody really likes that, right? Nobody truly likes being lied to or likes a liar. Some people do like to be lied to, but I think it's just because they they use that as an excuse for themselves to be irresponsible a lot of the time. So so it's difficult to have a lot of sympathy for, for folks that want to believe a lie. So I'm, I'm getting close here, getting close to the, to the end of this, this little picture. This is where it gets really fun because now I'm able to just start scribbling around and finding little places to to play, and it's it's just it's lovely. It's nice to be able to do that. Yeah, I like I like doing this method. Okay, well, let's do the blue. Do the blue. Make some little blue in here. Just about at an hour. I try to keep these, I keep these streams down to an hour because, I mean, you've got better things to do than to sit here and, and watch me draw all day. I'm still going to be here for a while and finish this up. I don't know if I'll get the whole page done, but you know, we'll see. We'll see. Hopefully. But I know you guys got some real things to do so I'm not gonna try and keep you here all day long that would not that'd be kind of kind of nasty of me so I won't do that and I feel like an hour is a good amount of time right it's a good amount good amount of time good a good length so I usually have somebody that comes in but nobody came in today at least Nobody came and said anything in the uh, in the chat. So if you do come in, say hello. You know, I don't I don't expect people to come and watch watch this for an hour, but um, if you do drop by, come on in and say hello to you know, and let me know let me know where you're from. Say hello and say yeah, I'm from 
you know, Austria or uh, I'm from t I'm d from down the street or you know, I'm two towns over or wherever you may be from. I, that's why I do it. I'm trying to connect with people while, while I draw just so that if, you know, I may have some information to disseminate or something I can help you out with. That's cool too. But this is, you know, this is about me connecting with people as I do this thing that that can be kind of solitary. I'm just trying to bring some more um, people into it, make it more of a community thing, start some community around it. So, if you're into that, just say hi, and um, I'm going to try to do this every day. Today is is Friday, so I, I won't be here tomorrow. I'm going to take the weekends off and and not stream. Um, but um, come Monday, I'll be back. I'm going to activate a few of these trees. Oh, like I say, I mean, like I said before, the activating is where it's just like, yeah, yes, these colors are nice. So, the brush makes a big difference. Like I said, I, I you know, I tried these... I got these before and I just thought, man, these, these are no good because uh, I just wind up pushing the, the pigments not staying where I put it. It just moves around. And it's because I was using these really aggressive uh, brushes that, that maybe weren't even for watercolor. I don't even know what they were for. But And I read on Wet Canvas or somewhere, one of those online art dealios, that... Uh, yeah, that you're supposed to use um, a watercolor brush on these, or else it does push it around. And I'm, wow. And it's thought, well, maybe I should try that. And I did, and you know what? It's made all the difference. Made all the difference. Now, this is, uh, this doesn't look real. It, it doesn't look as good on the camera as it does here in my studio. Because the values are are not as nice, I wonder if, if uh, kind of do that. But anyway, that's where we wound up, and it looks like we're just about at 58 minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and call it a call it a call it a stream. So thanks for watching, whether you watched it live or whether you're going to watch it um, here in a bit. Thanks either way. Uh, I guess subscribe, because I only have six. <laughs> I only have six subscribers, and I, I do hate it when people ask you to subscribe, but in my case, uh, I guess it's necessary <laughs> to, to ask you to subscribe, since I only have six subscribers. And I can't stream mobile until I get at least a thousand, which means I won't be able to go to my uh, studio that, that's adjacent to the house until... I get to that point. So anyway, all all of those are really non-issues. So I hope you have a good day. And again, thanks for watching. And I'll I'll see you Monday.